I'm David Pfeiffer, uh, we're at Max Sutton Farm Daily, just five miles south of Girvan. We're up on Hadjard Hill, the hill's 1,500 acres. We've changed systems in the last five years to a more outwintering um, system with cattle, deferred grazing, and went away from the more traditional sheep uh, system. Five years ago, we, I think it was 2018, decided we'd need to change. We're too labour intensive uh, sheep system and cattle system. So we went and done quite a lot of research over different farms throughout Scotland, um, seeing what system would work on our farm. Um, we had a 900 black yews on Max on the hill at Maxwell. Um, 360 were pure to the pure blackies and the rest were crossed with the uh, um, blue face Leicester for producing mule ewe lambs. It wasn't really a system that I enjoyed, it was the sheep system at all. I was more into producing fat lambs, so we've had a big change of ewes from we've put all the Aberfield tips over the blackies and we're keeping the the Aberfields for the Yow and running them more in by and having the cows at the hill. Our stock numbers in 2018 was probably about 1,300 yows and now we're down to about 950. Um, I think we could push it more now, we've got our system to where we, where we want it. It was just having the, trying not to have too many numbers while I was do, doing my transition. Um, so we're in, we don't have any ewes that have held during the summer at all now. We keep them all in the fields because we're making less silage. They're easier gathered and worked with and then there'll be some come to the hill in December after or January once they're scanned. Um, the fit ewes to mop up the rest of the deferred hill grazing. Um, and the cows, the cows of our well, numbers have not changed greatly in the f last five years. Have dipped a bit, so have slipped. All oh, the back end calves round to the the spring over a couple of years, so we're all spring calving, breeding our own replacement heifers, uh, Salir heifers to calve it too. And our well, numbers were. Well, 203 I think to calve this year and hopefully next year we'll get back to our kind of amount, our normal amount of 220 um, and they'll, they'll all calve in the spring and over an eight, nine week period <coughs> is the kind of plan going forward. We, we've got a 200 feet long silage pit at Maxwell. We used to fill it, make bales, feeding from October to into May. Now I'd lucky if I only make a third of that silage. We try and keep the cows out on the deferred hill grazing, or my silage pit as we call it, um, for as long as possible. We'll start giving them blocks, um, feed blocks, maybe into December, and maybe even hay, January. Um, but I think we've got potential to put more cows out here the years we've gone and the more learning we're doing about this this new system. It was all about having the right kind of cow, that's taking time. Um, and just trying to see what they can do on this um, on this rough grazing that's left to grow all uh, summer. Um, so that's just where we're at. We've tried to put poly wires up section the uh, how maybe three years ago into two or three sections to rotational grace mobs salt the cows round. It was a few stabs and then maybe three or four poly poly poles. But if we put the yows back out the yows would rub in the poles and the, it would it just it wasn't happening for us. So we had looked into um the GPS collars, the no fence collars. Um, so last year was the first we uh, got 196 collars and we'll, we'll put them on the cows 
when we dehorn the calves in June before they go to the bull and we pre bull scan the cows at that point to make sure they're all functioning inside, collars on, and then we'll rotational graze the cows round the round the what used to be silage fields now, some of the better fields with the collars and just keep moving them every day. <coughs> The calves get a fresh bite, so they're forward grazing, they're not got collars on them. And keep keep them moving and then we'll put them onto the hill, the cows with the collars after spending time, the fittest cows, and then we'll rotational graze them round about the the hill kinda of loosely um, over the winter and try and if it's a kinder winter they'll stay out longer. It all depends on the winter. The learning process with the collars has been not too bad. Um, the first day they were all out through the fence, but they all ran back, back into the where they were meant to be. Their heads were up, and um, but I think the cows have got used to them now. Um, so I think it's definitely a game changer if you want to push the boundaries of getting the the, the most out of your grass. If it's a grass-based system and then onto the hill and try and rump down the hill in bits that don't usually get where the cows wouldn't usually where the cows wouldn't usually eat. So I think the hill's improving as the years have went on and I think that'll just keep going. And the more the more grass we can grow up here, the more stock it can carry. We've always had cows in the hill. I mean my grandpa had fifty blue greys in the hill, which was a great cow. And they were out all year, so we started to feed them but I was trying to find them, it was a problem, 1,500 acres of hill, and one day at one end, one day, so it was a nightmare trying to find them. With these collars, so you can look on your phone before you go and see them. Probably the worst bits of the hill first, the wetter bits, and then move the cows to the better bits as the year goes on, and probably move them closer to home, or onto drier bits, where they could probably give them hay if the weather turns quite harsh. We'll, we'll grow a lot of Forage crops, we've trialled um, stubble turnips, uh, red start, and this year we're on to fodder beet. But the red start, we tried to, to red start in bales last year, and we tried in calf heifers with the collars to move, instead of having a poly wire, it was not successful at all. They just they wanted to breach the fence all the time. Um, so we're back to poly wires this year for the for the for the grazing of the the forage crops through the winter. It just it was just a non a non runner. It just didn't happen. So we're looking now at the field of fodder beet, which was sown in April, end of April when beginning of May. It was in Barley last year. There's eight acres in here. Um, there's 60 head of cattle. There was maybe 60 or 70 bales set along the outskirts of the field. These cattle used to be housed during the winter on slats or straw quartz. Now we've changed back to fodder beet and away for red start kale. We want to go we're for a higher dry matter crop, so it's less acres under duress and we'll keep them out hopefully into, into the new year, all depending how long the crop lasts. In years gone by we've always housed, housed the cattle. Since 2018 we've been trialling different methods. For the beet we've tried it before, with sheep we've lost half the crop. Um, with frost, um, so we're but we're trialling it again. These cattle hopefully should be out here to into the new year. Um, it depends on how how long the crop lasts um, and, and uh, the bales. But once they'll get housed after this field's finished. So the whole idea is it's Christmas Day with the kids because hopefully everything should still be outside and just a couple of fences to shift in the mornings and that's how work's done hopefully. This is for in-calf heifers and leaner cows. 
that the heifers that calve this spring. These cattle will be out for a good while yet. Plenty of fat cover on them since they're calving down at two, hopefully, to get them back and calve next year is um, the main thing. Um, we also have the, all the young stock, the calves from this year, 185 of them out on um, fodder wheat as well in a different field. We're, we're going to be weighing them and we'll find out what they're doing per kilos per day with just fodder wheat and silage. Um, the, hopefully we should get somewhere between 0.8 and a kilo of growth and we're going to be selling them in February, March through to through to June, July, just pick away at them.